the viewers. Cindy Oaks here. This uh, is a short little video on instructions on using an SQL light wrapper that I've written and I'm going to put it on SourceForge and if it's accepted I will put it on Code Project also. Anyway, um, a little bit of history here. Um, I was needing to uh, some persistent data and I wanted to for speed and I wanted to use SQL and I did not want to use the core data because I have used core data in the past and it's just real cumbersome and so I just thought this was better. I didn't I didn't need the um, database, you know, adding the entities. It was just a lot of work. I just want to use SQL on all my projects and so that's what I did. So I went out hunting for instructions on using help SQL just thinking it would just be like you know anything else adding a table view or, or you know a label or, or anything well there was little or nothing out there um, I did find some stuff in Objective-C but uh, one I never did get to run and so and then two when I looked at the code it didn't really look like anything I wanted to use and then I found uh, another tutorial and it was like they told you somewhat how to do it, but you never could actually, they didn't show tell you how to get it running. You had stuff going in their playground. I mean, it didn't do any good for anything. And then it was so convoluted, so complicated. I mean, it was like they was trying to discourage you from using it. So um, I just tried to write my own. Anyway, so let's look at the README because I'll forget, okay? How you um, get SQL in your project, any project, is you start off, you have your empty project with you starting off, or it can be an old project, and you go to the SQL, and first it's got to be linked, okay? It's got to be linked, and you do that in the linked frameworks, and like here we've got it linked. And then second, um, you can create your bridging header file, and that is just, you know, you, a command in and you just close the header file but we're canceling because we've already got ours and in the header file you include this line include sqlite 3.h and so that includes your CAPI and then after that um, you go to the build settings that's up here build settings and this is kinda hard to find sometimes so we'll just type it in the search box and that is, we're going to look for our header. Because we have to type in the name of our header. And we could have typed in something more specific and got it. But we, So, this is where you type in your header file. Sometimes you can type in bridgingheader.h, but then sometimes that won't take it. So, you'll have to have the name of the project slash bridgingheader.h. And then that seems to be good enough. And then, for your project, um, if you want, you can just copy and paste this into any class that you want, or you can just, you know, import this in. Um, you know, if you don't like the name I've chose, sqldataio.swift, name it something else. Um, I like that name. Anyway, so and this is where we have all our commands. These first two methods, functions, uh, perform SQL commands and uh, print rows commands, those are really not part of it. Those were just for the demo. You can delete those out if you want. The commands are open database, which you will not need. Uh, update database, which you just pass it a, a string, a select statement uh, for whatever you want. And like delete something, insert something, whatever you want. You pass this string to it, it opens it up, it does it, and it closes it. That's all you have to do is type, you know, update database and put in the, uh, pass it the SQL string. Uh, if you want to get one value, uh, I've got something called DB value, and you just pass it the string, it goes and gets that one value, and it returns it to you. Okay. Now, um, I have noticed on the examples I ran, it did not automatically implement the ID number. So, uh, before I inserted one, I went through and got the next ID, and use that as the value in my insert and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, for whatever reason if you don't want to do DB value if you don't want to have to convert it and you know what you're looking for is an int you can call DB int and you just pass it the um, uh, the select command. On the get rows you just uh, 
it gets frost and it sends it back to you in a two dimensional array and you pass it the command plus number of rows and it gets it for you and there's more variations you could do to this you know like um, sometimes in some of the stuff I write um, like in other languages I do similar things and I might like if it's a big long class of something that I know and I know the specific data I would just make a class just for that like you know get you know part numbers and I would fill it up with just that so you, it's just whatever is easier for you if you don't mind converting data you can just use get rows and get rows is handy just for a few things I mean there might be all kinds of stuff you would need it for um, I did not put in the blob data uh, if I decide you know if I need blob data then I will put it in and I will update my zip files on there okay um, this example I don't know uh, basically it's a table view and I go create all these commands and then I call it and I put the commands and the output in an array and then I say that the data source is um, that uh, list okay and so then that works for us so um, what else do we need? We can run it, that's for sure. So let's let's run it. Oh, another thing too, the for this simulator, uh, or even it is a real long directory path. So I printed at the bottom so that you can see where it is, and that you can go and throw this out because every time you run it, it creates a new one. And if you didn't delete it out, it would still it would okay. It'd be running. It'd just keep adding and adding and adding. And I don't want to do that so I just delete it after each run and so let's run it all right and this as tells the commands that we did um, I got the database started the very first command was I inserted uh, these six records that tell me what the next ID was each one and then I went and got the rows and I displayed them um, see and I did all four columns first name last name and age uh, I updated um, let's see I updated the row one from my name Cindy to Adam and then I displayed that one row but a different number of columns um, what else did we do uh, we select name, select age. I did the DBN and the DB value twice. I deleted a row and uh, select person. And then I went and selected names of all with Oaks in the last name. And what else did I do? Then I added myself back. Forgot what all I did. And then I listed everyone again with a different number of lists from family with a different number see one two three four five six seven so that's pretty much it so I'm gonna put this out and call it good and I hope it helps you um, if not don't use it alrighty you guys have a great day bye